Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PSY312 by Dear Knowledge. Last time we discussed uh, observations, its types, naturalistic observation and laboratory observations, the case studies, surveys, both its advantages and disadvantages with examples. And today in this video we will be discussing a correlational studies. So let's begin with the correlational studies. Before moving to our lectures, I have included some points in definitions in the start of our lecture so it will be easy for you to understand it if we discuss these points or these terms during our lectures. So correlational study is actually a research strategy that allows the precise calculation of how strongly uh, related two factors are to one another. And correlation coefficient is a numerical indication of the magnitude and direction of the relationship the um, correlation between two variables and then there's a positive correlation which is a finding that two factors vary systematically in the same directions uh, increasing or decreasing together and then there is a negative correlation which means a finding that two factors vary systematically in opposite uh, directions one increasing as other decreases now let's come to the correlation studies um, Along with answering who, what, where, and when the data gathered by descriptive research techniques can be analyzed to show how various factors are related. A correlational study examines how strongly two variables are related to or associated with each other. Probably the best way to develop an appreciation of correlational studies and of their limitation is to look at a simple example. For example, many people believe that there is a relationship between stress and susceptibility to cold. The more stress you are under, uh, the more likely you are to catch a cold. So how, would, how could we investigate this relationship? First, we could survey about the number of, uh, about the number of stress events people have experienced in the last six months. For example, financial troubles, relationship problems, and job-related pressures, and so on. Then we could ask them how many cold and respiratory infections they have had during the same time period. With these data in hand, we could use assistic statistical procedures to calculate a figure called correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient is a numerical indication of the magnitude and direction of the relationship between two variables, or you can say the correlation between uh, two variables. A correlation coefficient always fall in the range from minus 1.00 to plus 1.00. The correlation coefficient has two parts, the number and the sign. The number indicates the strength of the relationship and the sign indicates the direction of the relationship between the two variables. So 1.00 is actually the number and the plus and minus sign is uh, actually the sign which indicates the direction of the relationship between the two variables. Okay, more specifically, uh, the closer a correlation coefficient is to 1.00, whether it is positive or negative, the stronger the correlation or association between two factors, uh, hence the correlation coefficient is uh, plus 8.0 or minus 0 0.80 plus 0.80 or minus 0.80 would represent a stronger association, whereas a correlation coefficient of plus 0 0.10 or you can say minus 0 0.10 would represent a weak correlation. So notice that a correlation coefficient do not function like the algebraic number line. A correlation of minus 0 0.80 represent a stronger relationship than uh, does a correlation of plus 1.0. So the plus or minus sign in a correlation coefficient simply tells you the direction of the relationship between the two variables. Now let's come to the positive correlation. A positive correlation is a definition that uh, the definition includes a finding that two factors vary systematically in the same direction, increasing or decreasing together. So a positive correlation says that plus 0 0.80 is one in which two factors vary in the same direction. That is, the two factors increases or decreases together. For example, there is a positive correlation between the years of education and average annual earning. As years of education increases, average yearly earning increases.
or we could state that uh, state it the other way as year of education decreases the average annual earning decreases either way it is stated the two factors vary in the same direction then in a contrast a negative correlation uh, the definition would include a finding that two factors vary systematically in opposite direction one increasing as other decreases a negative correlation is one in which uh, the two variables moves in opposite direction uh, as one factor increases the other factor decreases for example a negative correlation exists between the marital uh, marital uh, marital stat uh, <coughs> marital satisfactions uh, and the rate of divorce as a degree of reported marital satisfaction increases the rate of divorce decreases uh, Thus, when two factors are negatively correlated, the two factors vary in opposite direction. Given the basics of correlation coefficients, let's go back to our example of investigating the relationship between stress and cold. After crunching the data, let's, uh, let's assume that we found a strong positive correlation of plus 0 0.90 and between the number of stressful events people experienced the number of colds people had this is people who had experienced high number of stressful events had a higher number of cold than did people who experienced a lower number of stressful events now here's the critical question based on this even evidence can we conclude that stress causes susceptibility cold now the question is, can we conclude that the stress causes susceptibility, cold, susceptibility to cold? Not necessarily. Even if stressful life event and cold are very strongly uh, correlated, it is completely possible that other factors is involved. For example, it may be that person who are under a great deal of stress have more contact with other people and thus are more frequently exposed to cold germs. Or it could be that people who are under a great deal of stress engage in a more unhealthy behavior such as uh, smoking eating a poor diet or getting uh, inadequate sleep rather than stress it may be that unhealthy behavior increases vulnerability to colds so the critical point here is that even if two factors are very strongly correlated Correlation does not necessarily indicate casualty. A correlation tells you only that two factors seem to be related or co-vary in a systematic way. Although two factors may be very strongly correlated, correlational evidence cannot demonstrate a true cause and effect relationship. Even though you can't draw a conclusion about causal uh, causality with a correlational research, correlational, uh, correlational research is still very valuable for two reasons. First, correlational research can be used to rule some factors and uh, identify others that merit more intensive study. Second, the result of correlational research can allow you to make meaningful uh, predictions. So each of descriptive methods we have looked at in this uh, section can provide information about when behavior happens, how often it happens, and whether other factors or events are related to the behavior being studied. Uh, in the next video, we will be studying the experimental method. Uh, if you like the video, your concept is clear, you got the point, you can uh, click the like button. If you want to get notification of the upcoming videos, if you want to stay notified of the upcoming videos and lectures, you can subscribe our channel and you can share the videos with your friends so they can also get benefit from this channel because sharing is caring. Until then, Allah Hafiz.